Hi there, welcome back. And this is a little uh, side project which um, I wasn't expecting to do so soon, but the components arrived, so there's no time like the present. What is this, you ask? Well, it's actually an amplifier. Does Manuel need another amplifier, you ask? No, he does not. But you're not my wife, so I don't have to justify it. But I will. I need another amplifier because I wanted a bench amplifier so that I can add this to my collection of goodies at the top there. I've got a dummy load at the moment. I've got the uh, stepped attenuator. I've got the mini whip switcher. And this thing is going to fit on or above the bench like the other things in a row and um, add to the usability of this workspace. Now, why do I need a, well, a lab amplifier? Why does anybody need a lab, lab amplifier? Firstly, because when you test something that is line level, you need to amplify it. And getting another amp in here is, is a pain. Um, it's just, those things are bulky. And um, I want this thing to be on all the time or close to on all the time. So I can just flick a switch and I'm ready to do the testing. And what I did was I looked for a, I wanted a chip amp. And if you don't know what a chip amp is, it's basically an amplifier in a chip, on a chip. And I prefer these linear ones. These are the LM series. Now I previously built a, uh, an LM38, LM3875, 3885, 3875, yeah. And I was very, very happy with it. It's about 50 watts. And um, it really couldn't get any simpler. The chip amp does all the work. And uh, you just have a few extra components here. This one's got more than most, actually. It's got a speaker protection. It's got the filter supply here already. It's on board. So it makes it very, very easy to build my uh, workshop amplifier. This is an LM3886. It's supposed to produce about 68 watts stereo. I don't need that much. I really don't need that much. And literally all you need to do on this board is connect the speakers, connect the power supply, and connect the input. And then of course, connect that up to a uh, suitable heat sunk surface. This particular chip is the one with the insulated back. You get one with a metal back. This one makes it easier. You don't have to actually insulate it with pads or anything like that. Probably a little bit easier to deal with the heat dissipation. But this one I got from a company in France and um, I bought a few things from them. All of it to do with audio and I found this one, and the reason I chose this particular one, and I'll link that below, is it's this form factor. It fits very nicely into the modules that I want to use. You see, that, that idea is that I literally put this in here and uh, connect all the wires and sockets and plugs and everything else that I need to, and this thing will fit nicely in there. I've actually fit a heat sink on here. It's not big enough if I want to do some real power testing, but I don't want to. I don't really need to worry about much power. Most of the time when you use a lab uh, amplifier, you don't go above three, four watts. So this thing is going to be more than enough. The actual power supply, as I said, all you need is a, a dual transformer. This one says 24024, so 24 volts uh, dual transformer. Uh, probably around 160 VA to give it a bit of oomph if I need it. And I've got that thing coming, but I'm going to use a temporary one for now. So all I have outside of this whole unit will be the transformer. And that'll be sort of stuck underneath there as well, under the shelf, at the back, properly insulated so that no shocks are going to happen. And uh, this thing should do the trick. Now, if you do want some audio gear from these guys, they definitely do a great job. They gave me a discount on this one, so I'm actually a little bit biased, <laughs> but I'll tell you what I think, really what I think. That's the only way to do it. So I'm gonna put this thing together, but before I do that, let me show you what I plan to do. This thing is uh, getting fixed at the back here, and then I've got the various accessories that I, I wanna put in. First of all, I've got a switch here, which is gonna switch the mains going to the transformer. In other words, a wire is going to come from the mains in to here, switch on, go back to the transformer, and then the transformer is going to send three uh, wires and a ground 
well, uh, mains earth if I want to connect it. I'll do it to the chassis anyway. I'm not sure that I want to make any of this earth grounded. I may uh, leave the option there to leave it floating. I think that's what I will do. And um, this thing will switch on the power. There's an LED that's going to go on there. This thing is the left in and left out. So my audio inputs through an RCA. These are pretty good RCAs. They're insulated as well. So we don't have a problem with this thing touching the chassis. I've got all the insulations over here. Then I've got a pot. Now the pot is simply a 20k pot, which is going to take those two inputs. It's a dual pot. This is an Alps Blue. It's a very good pot, so um, it should track quite well. And I want it to track quite well because obviously this is a test amplifier. So that's going to go in here. The uh, outputs come out here again on insulated speaker connections. So far, everything is insulated from the uh, chassis itself. And then, of course, I can take the wires from here, the speaker outputs, and plug them into my dummy load at the top there. So I can use the dummy load to do testing, to check things on the scope and everything else, just as I would do with an external amp. So I'm going to put this thing together and uh, we'll be testing it and I'll let you know how it goes. Now, this again is one of those aluminium profiles cut at the top and it's going to fit at the back there and um, it's going to look pretty cool. I have uh, drawn out the, the faceplate um, on uh, Adobe Illustrator. I printed it out on a transparency and then with some spray glue I cut it out and uh, glued it to the front. Then of course sprayed some lacquer just to make sure everything stays. That's how I've done it with the other ones. I did attempt something with uh, decals, but quite honestly this is just a lot simpler for the things that I need. This is simpler. So let me get on with it and we'll see how we get along. And we sure have got along. We've got along quite nicely, thank you very much. Here's the result. Our two inputs, the on-off switch, the LED, which is not in there yet. We've got the uh, volume control with a really nice aluminium uh, knob here. Quite like these. They look suitably laboratory type. I like them. And we've got the uh, speaker outs. Now let's look at some of the details. The speaker outs have a common ground. That one in the center goes to the two there, which is important for us because this um, type of amplifier, and this is why I said earlier I wanted the linear type, the LM type, they use a common ground. The ground that is used for audio and for power is the same zero volts. So this is not a problem when you put an oscilloscope across here. Uh, you will not be shorting out uh, the two outputs, which happens with the digital amplifiers sometimes. You've got to be very careful. Hence the choice of this one. So the two grounds connected, connected to the center. I've got the left and the right connected up here. Everything is isolated from the case, remember? Looking at the power coming in, I've got the uh, sleeve. This is one of those silicon braided sleeves. It's tied up with some uh, cable ties here just so that it doesn't come off. I've got the uh, two blues. The black is our zero volts. And uh, then I've got the ground. This is the uh, going to be the mains earth. That is just here for now. It's not connected. I'll have to figure out what I want to do with that. I've got the two switchable wires going up to the switch. And this switches on when I click down. And these then are going off to what will be the transformer section. So as you can see, they're basically hanging around here. I've given it enough length that um, wherever I put the transformer on the back, these will reach fairly well. The two audio connections, the bottom there, come to the top of the pots. The uh, ground is obviously connected to common ground down there and then connected to the center there. Everything isolated from the chassis as well. And then the uh, wipers go to the left and the right connector on there. Everything is uh, pretty neat. It's got, uh, I've used some uh, silicon transparent heat shrink tubing that uh, just protects the wiring. 
nothing is touching anyway, but just to be safe, that's in any way. And as I've done before, I've got an L bracket here. This is screwed onto there. There's a nut on the end there. This will then be um, screwed into the wood to the underside of that shelf, just to protect it when I plug something in or pull something out, this thing will not come loose. That lip there actually fits into a lip that's been screwed on there, an aluminium strip. This is one of the other reasons why um, connecting the whole chassis to ground is probably not what I want to do, because that aluminium strip will cause a ground connection to all the other devices that I have on here, and I'm not sure that I want that. But I've got the option, I've got that ground wire, that earth wire there. If this thing creates any kind of hum, I might be able to resolve it with the uh, earth wire. I don't think it will, it'll be completely isolated. Ultimately, the signal gets grounded at some point, whether it's from the actual source that you're putting in, or um, at the well, at the end, it won't, uh, that won't be the case, but if I put a scope on there, then the grounds of the scope will be earthed. So um, this way I can avoid earth loops, which might be a good thing. Now, all I need to do is set it up to test it. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have the actual transformer for this yet, but I do have a dual AC supply. This is just a transformer with a lot of taps. It's, uh, it's got uh, dual of everything, 0, 10, 12, 15, 17. I'm going to connect this to plus minus 15, which means I short out the 15 and zero, and that'll be the 15 volts AC and another 15 volt AC with a zero in the middle. So I'm gonna connect this up. I'm going to connect it to the speakers and we'll see what we get. Hope for the best. Now it's all connected. I've connected that to zero, 15, minus 15. This is on. I've got a signal coming out of the signal generator into the left and right inputs, the same signal. I've got the speakers connected to the dummy load. Left speaker, right speaker. I've got the selection down here to dummy load. I'm going to set it to speaker. I have the uh, output going to the respective inputs of the scope. And here we are. Again, if you've been following my channel, you'll realize this is a new baby here. But let me put the volume up. That is left and right channel. Pretty close together. There's a slight overlap on the yellow there. But that is it. Now let me put this on dummy load so we don't have to listen to it. And let's get a bit more volume on here. Um, Still a bit more, half a volt per division, keep going up. Now, as it gets higher, the uh, yellow trace is slightly larger than the pink trace, but just messing around with the audio cable here, the speaker cable, I think this cable's got a problem. Yep, definitely does. Got to check the connections, the solder connections on that, um, on that uh, speaker jack. This is on the cable part of the jack. But there we are, it's working. And at the moment, I've only got 15 volts. I'm not gonna put this up to maximum power, or anything like that. I think what I'll do is I'll uh, wait till I get the final transformer with a bit more power handling capability before I put this thing through its paces. But I'm really pleased with the result. Let's try something else. Let's try a square wave. Okay, here's our square wave. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right, we've got some cursors on here. I want to see what happens when I play with the frequency. Let's, we're at one kilohertz. Let's keep upping that. Pretty much staying here. Oh, that's 30 kilohertz. And we still got the full amplitude. A little bit more than I bargained for. Starting to come down ever so slightly at 60 something kilohertz. I wonder what the actual 3 dB point is on here. Let's go up in bigger steps. 
Jeez. Crikey almighty. That is 220 kilohertz. This thing is as broadband as you can get at the top end. I wonder what it's like at the bottom end. Okay, there's our one kilohertz. Okay, let's go down. You'll start seeing some drop off at the bottom, I'm sure. Not yet, 100 hertz. Good Lord. 10 hertz. And this thing is still showing the whole band. This is impossible. Okay. All right, three hertz. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this thing is flat. Flat, 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 right across the band. I mean, we were three hertz. And this thing has got a capacitor on the input, so I don't understand it. It must have a very high input impedance up there. The impedance is actually the um, volume pot, which is still active. Fantastic as a lab amplifier. It is a lab device. It's giving us a, basically a flat response all the way from damn near DC to, well, broadcast band. Okay, great stuff. So here we have it. My laboratory amplifier is done and it's working very, very well. Better than I expected. I've got some uh, speaker protection, which I didn't actually expect to have on these modules. But um, this is one of the reasons why I chose this module. It has quite a few extras and I'm really pleased with it, especially as um, I got a discount on it and told them I would uh, do a video on it, which is this video, and that I would uh, say exactly what I thought about it. And what I think about it is that it's bloody amazing. So there you go. I've left the link in the description below for the uh, company that sells these modules. They're Audiophonics in France. The quality is, is fantastic. It's way beyond what you'd expect on uh, what you normally get from some of the eBay purchases. So I'm quite happy to recommend them. And this thing's going to be put into use below that shelf on the bench. Fantastic. So once again, thanks for your company. If you've enjoyed that, please click like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and all that jazz. And um, if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Links at the end of the video and in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.